fellow believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Almighty God. Just a few things to discuss tonight. Um, many of us have been raised and brought up in religion, an organized denominational religion or Christianity. Um, keep in mind that the church is based upon revelation. It's not based upon any fallible human being. Roman Catholic Church proclaims that the church was built on Peter. Peter was a fallible man that denied Jesus Christ three times before he was, after he was taken captive and being led to be crucified. Our Almighty God is perfect in all of His ways. Would He hinge His church upon fallible man? No, the Word of God says otherwise. Peter was the one that identified Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And this was by revelation of the Father. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the rock in which it is based is Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and God, the Word of Almighty God. And it is only revealed by revelation. Anyone that understands who Jesus Christ is must be given this revelation by the Father. Anyways, so keep in mind, if you look at the Word of God from the beginning to the end, which is Genesis through Revelation, the Bible tells us, the Word of God tells us that Almighty God does not dwell in houses built with the hands of man. Almighty God dwells in these temples in which He built, in which He created, and He breathed life into. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Almighty God, that self-same Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the same Spirit that divided or separated the waters from the earth, from the lands, in the beginning of creation. Also remember that the Word of God is living. For those of you that fail to read it, fail to study to show yourself approved so you can rightly divide the word of truth, you are going to be deceived. There are deceptions falling which have already fallen and which will continue to fall. There's a delusion coming that Almighty God Himself is sending because man believes a lie rather than the truth. We love this world so much and what we have in it more so than the fact and truth that Jesus Christ is returning and is at the very gates. Many professing believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, you love this world more than you do your own Creator and Savior. You love what you have here, especially in America. We are a spoiled, rotten nation. We eat in abundance. We have in abundance. We have a comfortable life here. And most believers do not want to believe the truth that we are living in the last hours of the last days. This is the last generation of mankind. Ezekiel prophesied over 2,500 years before it occurred that Israel would be established again and the Jewish people, God's chosen people, would return to their very lands, which occurred in 1948. When that occurred, that identified us as being in the last generation of mankind. In the Old Testament, a, la a generation is usually 70 to 80 years. So we know that we are in the last days. If you look, read the book of Matthew, it's chapter 24, Jesus Christ gave us clear signs and markers to watch for. And these are markers that occur progressively and increase in frequency and strength. Earthquakes in diverse places or diverse places. Earthquakes throughout the world. The size of them and the amount of them and the place of them has increased astronomically and continues to do so. Signs in the heavens and on the earth. Signs in the heavens. We've had asteroids and comets fly by and pass us by like never before. The signs of the times abound. Fellow believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
if you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you believe that He died and gave His life for you, study His Word to show yourself approved unto God. We are living in a time which is going to be, is very perilous as it is. But we are living in a time of great deception. The majority of our churches are falling away. The majority of professing believers in Jesus Christ are falling away from the truth and the faith. You're falling away from the Word of God, believing lies that are being presented by churches, by pastors and sheep. There's shepherds in wolves' clothing. Theology school was not ordained by God. Almighty God didn't send the disciples to any college or school taught by man. Theology school isn't ordained by our Father in heaven. Almighty God doesn't need man to teach. The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the Helper, the Comforter, the Spirit of our living God is our teacher. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, providing the ultimate blood sacrifice for our sins and the sins of all mankind, he spent 40, he rose again from the dead three days later with wounds of the crucifixion still in his body. He spent 40 days with the disciples. He didn't send them to school, he was their school. He was their teacher. He prepared them to go forth and preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in its fullness, unedited, unwatered down. Yes, we fall under grace. We are saved only by the grace and mercy of Almighty God through our faith in His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But the Son of God gave His life. He was crucified and tortured for us so that we might live. So if we profess Jesus Christ as Lord, if we confess our sins and we continue to return to them, ask yourself a question, does Jesus Christ live in you? There's an extreme to both ends. The Word of God is clear. We serve a God that is perfect in all of His ways. His Word is perfect as written. There is no confusion. All confusion that is in denominationalized churches, organized churches, churches that are organized by man, governed by man, are full of confusions. You have doctrines and creeds, over 2,050 different Christian denominations that all proclaim that they are the true church of Almighty God, that they have the true doctrine and they know the truth. That is, that is of the devil. Lucifer, that serpent of old, ever deceptive, ever cunning, he is the god of chaos. The god of this world is the god of chaos. And in fact, he's not a god. He is a fallen angel. We've been taught that he looks like a devil with horns, this ugly-looking thing, but you need to understand Lucifer was the chief mu musician he was the most beautiful angel. He was the head of all angels and he was a cherubim in the Garden of Eden. That is our enemy. He comes along with his ministers as an angel of light. They present themselves as angels of light, mimicking the truth of Almighty God, but taking many of God's children and sheep on a path straight to hell. The Word tell, doesn't tell us that Narrow and straight is the path to eternal life. And few there be that choose it. But broad and wide is the path to eternal damnation and destruction. And many there be that choose it. There's a reason the word tells us that. There are many professing believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you profess to know the truth and know the Lord. But every day, what are you living for? When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? What's the first thing you do? What God do you serve? We can only serve one God, our Lord Jesus Christ, or we serve the God of this dying world. You cannot serve God and man. You must choose. The time is running out. 
We are in the very last days. Yes, the word of God tells us no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the angels in heaven, but only the Father. But it also tells us that we are children of the light. We are children of the day. We are not children of the dark, where that day should overtake us like a thief in the night. If you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, this message should be touching your heart because it's not I speaking, but the Spirit of Almighty God. Each of us, when we believe in our hearts, we repent of all of our sins genuinely, meaning we do not turn back to them. Like a dog returning to its own vomit, we might fall short and make mistakes, but the Holy Ghost comes and lives in us and chastises us and we turn back and repent. That's the difference. There's a difference between a sp the spirit of truth, which is the genuine Holy Ghost, and the spirit of error which is the spirit of Antichrist. Now, it doesn't mean against Christ. It is an imitation, a copy, that is leading many on the path to hell. And those of you believers that say that hell isn't real, that the Bible doesn't mean what it says, the living Word of God means exactly what it says. Yes, there are spiritual depths to the Word, and man cannot interpret or understand or even teach the Word of God without the Holy Ghost teaching you. But hell is a very real place. It wasn't meant for mankind. It was meant for Satan, that Lucifer, Lucifer, that serpent of old, and his fallen angels, the angels that fell with them because of the evil they've committed and their rebellion. They will not repent. But all of you, mankind, Almighty God is gracious and merciful. He wills that no man perish, but that all come unto repentance and eternal life. Repentance means turning away from, not living repeatedly in sin. If you love the things of this world, the love of the Father is not in you, and that is the Word of God. Yes, it's a journey, the we are changed over the course of time. But understand this, when you genuinely believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who came in the flesh, was born of the Virgin Mary, begotten of by the Holy Ghost, lived a perfect life and did not sin, overcame temptation, sin, darkness, our enemy, this world, and even the sting of death, who was rejected by his own, spit upon, tortured and crucified on the cross, died on the cross for our sins. You've repented of your sins and you've asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life. His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the Helper, the Comforter, the Spirit of Almighty God comes into you and you are new, a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are not the same old man. You're not the person you were if you are genuinely saved. If you have salvation, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You belong to the kingdom of heaven. You will no longer walk as you walked. You will no longer think as you thought. Because it's no longer you who live, but Christ Jesus who lives in you. Time is running out. That day is fast approaching. Fellow believers that are not in your word, for those of you that believe that you will face no persecution in this life, no tribulation or trials, Jesus Christ himself warned us that we would be hated by all nations for his name's sake, that if the world hated him, they would also hate us. If Jesus Christ lives in you, the light of Almighty God abides in you, and darkness hates the light. And so, you will face persecution. In America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, well, that is all changing. Um, persecution to Christians and the Jewish people worldwide is going to ever increase. We are going to die for our faith. We are going to be beheaded 
for professing the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and as our God. Some of us may not live to see it, but many of us will. Just know that you must be prepared to die for your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are not, if you are holding on to hope that you will not face any persecution and be here for any of the disturbances coming, what happens if you are wrong and you have not been reading your word and you don't know what is coming? In Thessalonians, it tells us that not to worry or be dismayed that the, that day has already come, which is the day of Christ, not the day of the Lord. Understand that the day of the Lord is a day of judgment and wrath. It's not a day to look forward to. The Bible tells us that from the beginning to the end. Understand, too, that the Word of God is perfect as it is written. The end is foretold from the beginning. Many pastors or doctrines are formed based on taking one or two verses from the Word of God, from the Scriptures. But from the beginning of the Word in the Old Testament, we are told to use Scripture upon Scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. The Old Testament is a foreshadow of the New Testament and things to come. What's spoken of in the New Testament, you can be found in the Old Testament. So fellow believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, wake up, be sober, watch, for you don't know what hour our Lord Jesus Christ returns. He will return like a thief in the night. An hour when most professing believers in Christ don't expect Him. He does not delay. He does not tarry. Second Thess or in Thessalonians, it tells us that not to be dismayed that that day has already happened, that two things will happen before the day of Christ, before we are gathered together to our Lord and Savior. One, the falling away occurs. Look around you. Look at the churches around you. Go to any church and see if you can find the power of the Holy Ghost in there. See if you're taught the truth. How many professing believers in our Lord Jesus Christ are still in the Word of God, seeking, studying to show themselves approved? How many have fallen into errors and doctrines and denominational organizations, creeds, man-made religion, rather than genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which transforms your life. The great falling away is culminating. When, it, when it's completed, we don't, I don't know. Secondly, that man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Not to the world, for they don't know who he is. They don't believe the word of God. So they're not looking for him. The majority of professing believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, the majority of churches and denominations that believe in just a pre-tribulation rapture, that have not prepared their flock, their sheep, for what the Word tells us to keep watch for, you won't be looking either. Understand that the Antichrist will not come as an enemy to Christ on his face. He will come as that serpent of old did in the Garden of Eden to deceive Eve. He will come as an angel of light, professing God, to know God. He will quote scripture. He will know the Bible better than most believers. But he will never profess Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God, Lord and Savior, who came in the flesh, lived a perfect life, died on the cross at Calvary, for the sins of all mankind and rose again 
and is returning again. Understand the spirit of truth versus the spirit of error. Anyone that denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is anti-Christ. Donald Trump, yes, he mentions God. He's been prayed for. Um, he mentions how it touches his heart that many people in America are praying for him. But he has never professed the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and God over his life. Or that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, lived a perfect life, and died on the cross at Calvary. During his inauguration, yes, many pastors prayed over him, including a Muslim imam. Including a Hindu, different religions. A Beware, fellow believers, that the days of great deception are here. You might think I'm crazy. Do you understand that Almighty God gave mankind 120 years during the days of Noah to repent and to get in that ark before he destroyed the world with the great flood? As in the days of Noah, so will be the days of the return of the Son of Man. Many will mock. Many are already mocking and making fun of those of us that Almighty God is waking up. My whole life, I was saved when I was 14 years old. That's the first time I felt the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life. And I was on fire for months, but I didn't stay in the Word. And I quickly was fed with the world was lost for many years and even up until April of 2016 I thought I knew the Lord I thought I walked with him went to church on Sundays I shared shared the gospel with some friends as I could I didn't have the courage and boldness of speech to speak up and speak full truth that Jesus Christ is the only way the only truth and the only life if we don't know Jesus Christ, we don't go to heaven. April of 2016, I was passing away. And for the first time in my life, I fell down on my knees. And I cried out in the name of Jesus Christ, whose name is above every name. And I asked Almighty God to save my life to let me do His will. For the first time in my life, I understood. And since then, I've been on fire. There's a fire burning deep down in my soul that will never burn out. It only grows, and my eyes have been opened. Not to things of this world. Spiritual things. Understanding the Word of God and knowing what it means. The Holy Spirit is the only teacher of the Word. There isn't a pastor, a priest, a teacher, or a man in this world that can teach you what the Word of God means. You must seek for yourself. You must call upon the name of Jesus Christ for yourself. You must open your heart unto Him and let Jesus Christ come in. Let the Holy Ghost come in and baptize you with the Spirit of Almighty God. Only the Holy Spirit abiding in you can reveal what the Word of God means. The Word of God is based upon revelation or unveiling, nothing more. The Spirit of Almighty God must reveal to each of you individually. Yes, you can receive guidance and directions from pastors and fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord who are no longer drinking milk but eating food from the Word of God. But each of you are responsible for your own salvation. Where you spend eternity is, in, is up to you. It's not up to your pastor. It's not up to the church. It's not up to any man or woman or your parents. Eternal life rests in your hands. And if you don't call upon the name of Jesus Christ genuinely and receive the Holy Ghost genuinely, 
Repent of your sins genuinely, meaning in your heart, not with your mouth. The Holy Spirit discerns the hearts of all men. The Spirit of Almighty God is the discerner of the thoughts and hearts of all men. He knows if you mean what you say. Humble yourselves before the Lord your God. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, while he may be found. There's coming a time when you will seek the word of God and it will not be found. And if you are here in this world at that time, that means it's probably too late for you. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is unchanging. Although the heavens and earth will pass away with a fervent heat, the word of God abides forever. Jesus Christ is the manifest living word of God. The Holy Ghost who comes into your life when you truly believe and repent of your sins is that Word of God. The, the Word of God warns us to beware and stay away from those that have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Most churches, most professing believers have a form of godliness the religious people, but they deny the power of Jesus Christ in us. The Spirit of Almighty God lives in each of us who truly believe. The Bride of Christ, the true Church of Christ, the Spirit of Almighty God lives in us. We have power to not sin. <coughs> Do not be deceived. You have the power to stop sinning completely. Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. He did not sin. He overcame all. He overcame this world. Temptation, sin, and even death. And He lives in you. Depend upon His strength and His power and not your own. If we depend on our strength, we fail. And we will always fall. And usually when we fall the hardest to where nothing can get us back up, and we turn to Jesus Christ and call on his name, he will raise us up with the wings of an eagle. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone and in his word. Study his word to show yourself approved unto God, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Be warned. Take heed. The days are here. They're not coming. They are here. The days of great deception and delusion are already here. And great tribulation is coming. Tribulation that this world and mankind has never seen before, nor will they ever see again once Christ has completed his work. Wake up, fellow believers in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our everlasting Father, Almighty God, loves you so much that he gave the life of his only begotten son for all of us. We are bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, each one of us. Nothing we can do of ourselves in our own strength will save us. We will die in our sins if we do not turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him alone. Know that the word of God is the only source of truth. If I speak anything outside the Word of God, don't listen to me. Anybody, if they speak anything that is not in the Word of God, if it does not come out of the Word of God, don't believe it. But if it comes from the Word of God, if it's written, if it is part of the spoken Word of God, listen, take heed, for it is not I that speak. The Spirit of the living God is waking up his bride, his sons and his daughters. Wake up. The time is at hand. The return of our Lord Jesus Christ draws near. It's at the very gates. 
And then judgment falls like never before. Almighty God's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And the hearts of all men will fail. And many will be saved. An uncountable number of tribulation saints will enter the gates of heaven. But they will go through hell on earth to get there. The hour of grace is nearing an end. Wake up and repent, which every one of you. Amen.